It's the start of the 2023 hunting season, and for the past two years, I've come up empty hunting kudu. This year, we find ourselves heading to the Northern Cape to kudu country. Just uh, hitting some traffic on the way through Victoria Place. Water you left. So on my drive now, I just happen to be looking into this field. I'm gonna show you guys something radical uh, that I spotted from the road. What a horrible way to go out. No water, no food. This is the sad reality for a lot of these animals. And that's why it's so important that the population gets managed to get through times of drought. As we push on to Koi Koi River Lodge, I'm excited for the hunt that lies ahead. Good morning, welcome back. We're about a kilometer away from the Orange River. We are after a very specific kudu bull, so it's a nice mature animal. And that is our plan. We walk and stalk hunting next to the Orange River. It's early, we've seen probably 10 different kudus, mostly cows, but we're after a mature bull that's given all he can give to the population. And sometimes these mature bulls can become detrimental to the population. So that's our mission. We're gonna work our way around the front into the wind and hopefully spot the bull that we're after. Welcome to the video. Let's go hunting. So we've worked our way down to the river. We've glassed this section now, yeah. We continue working our way around the front. Absolutely spectacular. The level of the water has dropped so much since the last time we were here. It's quite, it's actually pretty crazy. And Vian was telling us how it happens in a matter of two hours. We can see some fresh tracks on the other side of the river in the sand. But that is out of bounds. If you shoot them there, it's caught poaching, not hunting. But we haven't seen anything on the other side either. So uh, we'll keep working our way around. But these bushes here, that are designed to annihilate flesh. <laughs> crazy so you have to be so careful where you're walking. I spotted a kudu about 200 meters from us down here. There's a few of them so we're gonna just set up here and see if there's a shootable bull or the bull we want for that matter. Turns out this group had a young bull however he's very young so we're gonna leave him be and let him make his contributions to the herd. We spent a good hour on this ridge glassing the riverbank trying to turn up something else before we inevitably dove into the prickly stuff to try and make our way down to the riverbank and work our way around the front hoping to turn up something else. The video doesn't do this justice but this bush is trying to kill you. We are in the thick of this bush and everything is very through this little ridge here or sort of little draw to see if we can get to the, the river side but this stuff is so thick oh, so moving very very slowly but uh, the animals also use this route but this is very dry very old and it's middle of the day now I'll just pass 11 it's probably 35 degrees Celsius but it's, a, it's been a lack of morning so far. We've seen a lot of animals, but no sign of a shooter yet. I don't like bush as much as the next guy, especially when it's trying to hurt you. 
By the time we got down to the river, there were no signs of any kudu or fresh tracks. However, we did notice a big thunder and rainstorm brewing on the horizon. The storm systems in this region of South Africa roll in pretty quickly. We knew rain and thunder was imminent, and it's probably a good idea not to walk around with a large metal stick pointing up at the air. The rain came quick, and the rain came heavy. I haven't seen rain like this in ages. Unfortunately, my daughter was also very sick during this hunt, and we decided to play the safe bed and canceled the rest of our hunt and made the nine and a half hour trip back home in case she needed medical attention. And just like that, another kudu season had come and gone with no success. Alrighty, it's just after five. We are heading up to the Northern Cape to the famous now Koi Koi River Lodge. I've been here multiple times over the last couple of years. Amazing venue. I'm gonna smash this drive and I'll see you guys on the Zero Range. Over the last few years, I've spent so much time hunting at Koi Koi River Lodge. It's really starting to feel like a home away from home. The beautiful drive to the Northern Cape never gets old and I always try and stop to film things along the way, like the zebra that seemed to be pretty afraid of that Jeep track. As I arrive on the property, I'm welcomed by a familiar face. Okay, so we are at the zero range now, just zeroing the SS. Debugged a mistake on my previous hunt. I'd somehow not tightened my scope, which happens when you have multiple guns and YouTubing. Vian's on camera for us today. Um, I'm gonna quickly zero the SS. Our first few days were unsuccessful, but on the last day, we got onto a group of kudu with about two hours of daylight to spare. Are we gonna go home another year without a kudu? We spent some time glassing up the group, finding two bulls, one nicknamed the orange bull. Some mud had dried on his horns, making him easy to distinguish from the group. This is it, it's make or break time. It's been four years since I last successfully harvested a kudu these things literally vanish into the bush. Here we go, we're gonna put on a stalk and do everything in our power to make sure we're successful. But first, let me untangle myself from this bush. This video was over two years in the making, so if you guys like the content we're creating, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel a lot. Okay, we've been here for a few minutes now. We can't see the bull we're after. The sun is setting. Quart for Kaksuk. Kakmok. Yeah. He must be here somewhere. But we don't know what to do. If we push, we might flood him. And if we wait, we might never see him because he might have crested the ridge. Because when we were stalking up on him, we went into the thickets and it was we could we lost visual for quite a while. And they don't call these things the grey ghost for nothing. <sighs> Yo, this is exciting though. Amazing. This is super amazing. And it's a beautiful evening. There's no wind. There's a little stream behind us. And both Vian and I went like when we heard a war dog drinking. Like we could physically aim licking the water. And he must have walked by. Meters from us. And he had no idea we were here. So, uh, yeah, it was super cool.
There's something extremely rewarding about watching an animal in his natural habitat, completely unaware of my presence. We observed him for quite a while before he eventually gave us a shot. With its head tucked into a bush, the safe shot was on the shoulder. The last thing you want at this time of the evening is having a kudu with a bad shot in it. as I thread the needle to slip around into its vitals. The kudu runs a lap around some thick bushes before inevitably coming to a stop in range for me to put a precise shot just below its ear, not to waste any further meat and to ensure it goes down in its tracks. Walking still kudu, baby. Slipping still. Hij zou eens gaan zitten. Maar ik wil die kans gevat het niet. It is such a privilege to be able to hunt an animal like this and it's something I hope a lot of people experience. This isn't the biggest kudu in the world, but it means so much to me having spent four years to try and get another bull down. These things are truly incredible and it is without a doubt my favorite animal to hunt. It always amazes me how on hunting videos people comment, why do you kill these animals? Well, I remind you of the beginning of the video, the alternative way for these animals to go when there isn't enough food and when there's drought. To make these memories with my friend Vian at Koi Koi has been such a rewarding journey over the last couple of years searching for this bull. Thank you Vian, you are one hell of a guide and a great friend. What a way to end our hunt at Koi Koi River Lodge. Absolutely fantastic. I've been on a bit of a kudu drought in the past couple of years. So to be able to finally tick the box with a beautiful specimen free range bull like this is an absolute honor. And the way it all played out, the way Vian and I walked and stalked it, Vian kind of reined me in, kept me patient and it paid off. We had to shoot him twice. The first shot would have done the job, but when he gave us the opportunity to take a 100% sure ethical headshot. We did that and it dropped him in his tracks and that's about as clean of a death as these guys can get and it's kind of our duty to do that as a hunter. Guys, thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in hunting in the Northern Cape or in South Africa, please check out Koi Koi River Lodge. For me as a South African, when I think about hunting in Africa or South Africa, a kudu bull is the epitome of that for me personally. These guys, not only tastes delicious, but the hunt is always a thrilling experience. With that said, if you want to see some of our other hunting videos, I'm going to link a playlist at the end here. And uh, thank you Vian and Koi Koi for this awesome experience. And thank you guys for watching. And thank you for the good meat that you'll be providing my family. A while ago in uh, one of my other videos with Fred, he's a very big practical joker. So you can never take him seriously. Hence they put a mount for me to shoot. That was actually one of the last kudus I shot, by the way. <laughs> the mount. Yeah. 
So he tells us this whole story about buffalo, but you never know if you should take a guy seriously or not. And uh, I saw in the comments, because we're all laughing and joking, like making little funny jokes. Oh, you don't have to be the fastest. You just don't have, mustn't be the slowest. You know, those kind of jokes. In the comments, people are like, you guys are so disrespectful to the P8. But we're very good friends, so relax. Oh, this is okay. Bedtime story. <laughs>